if you're an Amazon seller or an agency owner and you're struggling to hire the right PPC specialists, then this video is for you. I've spent more than 1,000 hours perfecting my hiring process and in this video, I'll give it all away for free. I put every step of my process on a Notion doc, which I'll leave in the description of this video. I'm about to screen share it right now and explain each step. Right, so little backstory for this video. Um, I was just hiring a PPC specialist. In fact, I just closed the candidate this Monday, which is September 25th. I'm not sure when you'll be watching the video, but that was a day ago for me. So I just finished the hiring process and I started filming this video immediately. Uh, in this video, I'll just take you through all the steps that I took to actually find the candidate, know that they're good, evaluate their abilities, and eventually decide whether or not I wanted to hire them. So there are three main steps. Number one is filling your candidate pipeline, which is essentially sourcing and screening candidates. Number two is the actual interview, what questions to ask, what red flags to look for, and what answers to expect. And number three is the take home assignment, which is like a case study that I give them. And I'm going to show you what the case studies look like, what a good answer is like, and what a bad answer is like. Right. Then finally, I'll just talk a little about how to evaluate the candidate and maybe what the first steps you should take are. So for screening and sourcing candidates, uh, you generally have two options. Um, one is inbound and the second is outbound. But before I get into those, I just want to clear something up. Most people think that PPC specialists should be hired from freelancing platforms like Fiverr, Upwork, or even like LinkedIn job posts, which isn't necessarily a freelance platform, but attracts the same audience. And that's actually a huge misconception because the top 1% of Amazon PPC specialists does, just don't apply to jobs there. They're not going to apply to a job on Upwork or they're not going to offer their service on Fiverr for $10 or $15 or whatever else it is. Most good specialists are working for other agencies or other brand owners or other aggregators. And those are the ones that you should be going after, right? So you have two ways of reaching these specialists. Method number one is LinkedIn posts. This might require you to have, you know, a small audience. I have an audience of around 4,000 people and a lot of PPC specialists follow me, or you just like have a good network that's going to comment on your post for reach or just post this in like different groups for Amazon PPC experts. You just want to make sure that you have enough traction on your posts to actually pull something like this off. But if you do, this is a pretty good way to find and screen candidates. So essentially what I do is I just create a LinkedIn post, not a job post, just a regular post. And I kind of have a format for it. So the first third, you kind of want to get them excited because generally you want to hire people who already have jobs and already doing well at their job. People without jobs are either beginners who are just like starting and looking for a job. And you may or may not want to hire, hire those depending on like what you're looking for. But in general, if you're looking for someone experienced and someone who's performing well, they're probably already going to have a job. So you want to excite them. So over here, I just said that we're growing a ridiculous amount month over month, which is true. AI, hello, my company is doing around 20% every month. Um, the second thing is that I said we're building the world's most advanced Amazon PPC software. If you're a PPC specialist, you kind of at least want to know what that will look like, even if you don't take the job. And I said that we're working with a team of super talented people and I want them to join us. Right. So this is a good enough message. You got a lot of people to apply. Then after that, you want to tell them how you'll screen them. So in general, I'm against resumes and against CVs, just because it's very hard to tell who's good and who's not. A lot of people work at bigger agencies, but they're pretty bad. And a lot of other people might have a bad resume. and They actually end up killing it for me. So generally, I don't like to screen by using resumes. I just screen by using these two questions. So essentially what I'm looking for is a good answer to one of these two questions. And the questions I tend to ask are number one, what's the most interesting thing you've learned out Amazon PPC recently. Then over here, you just want to see if they're constantly learning. So you want to see if they're going to be able to give you like a new insight or something that most people wouldn't know, which would number one, prove that they're experienced. Number two, prove that they're curious and smart. And number three, prove that they're actually learning something new. So this is the first question. The second question is, what's your most unpopular or contrarian opinion about PPC? I just want to see if they're capable of producing their own insights. If they've reached that level of experience or talent yet, where they're able to, I guess, go against the grain and kind of say something disagreeable that they think is true and actually back up their point. So this is another thing that I use. These two are very good because they filter for people who just want to be lazy and just submit like a CV or a standardized message that they've copy pasted to 50 other people. And it also filters for their capabilities a lot better than you could with a resume. So once you actually post this, you're going to get a bunch of people reaching out to. 
I'm just going to show you real quick what a good answer looks like and what a bad answer looks like. So a good answer to the questions would be something like this. Um, Hi, Safe. I've seen your post. These are my answers to the questions you asked. So the first one, which is the learning one, uh, they outlined a strategy that they use with the search query performance report to find ASINs and increase sales and market share, right? While keeping like costs low, this is pretty good. This isn't like a mega insight or anything, but this is pretty good compared to the other message I, messages I usually got. Then after that, they also mentioned brand tailored promotions. So this is actually a new feature. It's been around for a month. So the fact that they mentioned this is really good because they're constantly learning and testing new things. And they also included a mini case study for me with like the actual revenue from a brand and the number of days it took to hit that number. And they just said like, this is why we think it's powerful. So this is a really strong answer. They told me two things that they learned, one of them being a new, so it's only a month old and there they are reporting to me on results and how they used it. So that's really good. Uh, the second answer wasn't as good. Um, like the actual idea isn't bad, like lower bids doesn't always mean lower ACOS. This isn't a bad idea. It's just that I'd want them to actually back it up. So if this was the only answer that they gave me without the answer to the first one, it would be a definite no. But I just sat inside because the first answer was pretty good. So this one didn't matter as much. And it was actually like a, like a semi-controversial opinion. Like it wasn't entirely controversial, but it's semi-controversial based on like how they actually back this up. Um, a bad answer would be something like this. So first thing you'll notice is this one is much, much shorter. So Atlas effort went into it. And the second thing is there are no actual insights here. So over here, they just talked about how important sponsored brand video ads are. Sponsored brand video ads have been around for ages. Everyone has used them. This isn't an insight, which means one of two things. Either they're just super lazy with their answer and they didn't bother to write something interesting, or they're just not learning anything new, or they're a complete beginner and sponsored brand video is actually something like new to them. So these are all bad signs unless you're looking for that type of person. Uh, and then for the second one, again, this isn't an insight or controversial. Any 101 video on PPC will tell you not to focus on high competition keywords and to focus on long tail keywords, especially if your budget isn't that big. So neither of these answers impressed me and neither of them I felt were particularly like insightful or knowledgeable. So this is someone that wouldn't get an interview from me. So around 10% of people get the interview. And if I'm feeling like, I guess like unsure about someone's answer, I can give them a further screening question. So my further screening questions are usually a brain teaser. My go-to question is how would you estimate how many organic clicks happened on August 1st, 2023 on Amazon US alone? I'm not really looking for like a particular answer. Like I don't really care what the ad number is. I just want them to explain how they get there. And 50% of people will just be like, I couldn't find the number online or how do I even do this? I'm just unsure. On those people you 100% don't want to work with, then another like 45% will be like, you know, maybe Amazon gets X number of visitors. Then they just do some math that doesn't really make sense. And they end up with a number that's either way too big, like in the tens of billions or a number that's just way too small. And this is flawed thinking, but it's not necessarily bad. You just want to kind of challenge their answer and see if they're able to iterate their way to a correct answer. Now, if you see the ideal outcome, which is like a, one out of 20 or one out of 30 outcome is just that they answer it right with very good logic. I'm not going to reveal what the actual answer is just because I'm still actively using this question, but this is something that has been very useful for finding out who those actual high performers are because someone with a good resume or with a good, like, you know, you know, good amount of experience isn't necessarily going to be able to answer this if they're not able to come up with their own thoughts and kind of figure out how to solve problems that they haven't faced before. So this is a really good question to ask. Uh, the other way to actually get candidates, which is my favorite way, is just poaching. Like I said, like the best specialists are just working for other brands, other agencies, other like aggregators. So you can just reach out to them directly. And this is my favorite for two reasons. Number one is that when you reach out directly, you can control the quality much more because you're not waiting for people to come to you. You can just reach out to people who catch your eye. And number two is you can control quantity a lot better. So if you need more candidates, you just send more messages. So this is my favorite way, and it doesn't require you to have any type of audience. Uh, there are two ways to find candidates to reach out to. The first method is that you just go to those companies that hire from the same geographies that you hire from and go through their list of people on LinkedIn. Like here, for example, I just throw out this agency's name, but you just go through the list of people that work for them and hit connect. Or if you have sales nav, just send them an in-mail directly and try to get them on an interview. This is the quickest way. 
Um, the second way, which is also good, is go to like a popular like LinkedIn influencer or Amazon thought leader and kind of pay attention to who's engaging with their posts. This is good for two reasons. Number one is you don't have to think of agencies or companies to like search after to try to find their employees. They're all just here on one list. And number two, this filters for people who are actively learning. So this is like a higher quality like subset of Amazon PPC managers. And you can just open this up. And especially if someone leaves like an insightful comment or something, it's really good. But you can just open it up and go through it and just reach out to them one by one. Right? After that, you want to kind of think of the outreach message because I mentioned like the best specialists already have jobs. And if they're doing well in their job, they're probably happy with it. So they're, you know, probably doing well at it. Their job is probably fulfilling. Their boss is probably good to them. They might be in line for a promotion or a bonus or a raise or whatever else it is. So you have to be really, really convincing for them to leave their current job for you. So you want to have like an enticing message. So over here, I just said my team and I are building the world's most advanced Amazon PPC software. And we're growing our user base 20% month over month, right? So again, this is super interesting for most people. 20% month over month is super big growth. And a lot of people are going to be excited by that. If you're doing something that's interesting, perhaps like selling towels on Amazon US, you can just make it sound like you're on a mission. Like towels is like one of the biggest categories, blah, blah, blah. And we're trying to work together to be the number one seller in this category. Or, you know, hit this specific BSR or whatever else it is. You just have to make it sound like you're on a mission. Uh, and then you just like invite them. You kind of join the uh, rocket ship that you're on or like the mission that you're on. And you ask them, excuse me, you'd ask them if they'd be open for an interview. Uh, that's pretty much it. Around half of people will say yes. Some people will say no, but you can just ask them to speak and you see they're going to say yes after. So you can get like 50 to 70% of people to reach out to um, on a call. And, you know, if they're kind of not like super into it in the beginning, you can try to sell them on it. So you should spend the first 10 minutes just selling them on AI Hello and getting them super excited to join the company, which you know has the added benefit of having them perform better in the interview and just care more about like the entire process because they actually want to join. And obviously just like not judge uh, the position just like on a monetary basis. So this is something I like to do. After you have your candidates, um, and you screen them and you booked some interviews, obviously you have to ask some questions to figure out if they're good or not. I usually try to book at least 30 interviews so that I speak to enough like PPC specialists where I know like the person that I hire is going to be at least like a one out of 30 um, specialist. So at least 20, 30, 40 calls is what I want to book. And I tend to not ask any questions out Amazon PPC or about the experience because you can't really rely on Amazon PPC questions to identify the top 1% players. Uh, I was just reading the book um, about Elon Musk and he has this thing called the algorithm, which is like his rules for operating. And one of the rules which I really resonated with was uh, he said something like hire for attitude, not for skills. Um, skills can be taught, but an attitude change requires their brain transplant. And it's the same logic here. I just want someone who's hardworking, someone who actually enjoys what they do, someone who's smart, someone who's curious, someone who's going to go on and do big things, right? And whether or not they have X number of years of experience or whether or not they worked at a big agency or a big aggregator or did all these other impressive things, I want them if I feel like this person's high potential. Like I want to hire for a trajectory, not where they're at now. I just want to see how fast they're improving, right? So I have a few questions to identify this. I only have four questions that I primarily ask. Then I have follow-up questions. But generally, if they don't manage to impress you with these four questions, they kind of never will. So my first question and perhaps my favorite one is what did you learn about us before this call, right? A good candidate will spend like at least 30 minutes to an hour learning about you before the call, right? So in my case, I'm a software company, so I have a website. I also post content on YouTube, content on LinkedIn. I have a podcast, I have a blog, I have a bunch of other things. And I kind of want to see like how in depth they went with their research. Someone who's gone super in depth has a very high chance of being good. And someone who didn't check at all has a 0% chance of being good. You're going to hear a lot of excuses. Everyone was traveling. Everyone was out with their family. Everyone was busy at work and they didn't check. It takes 30 minutes to check. They probably spent their other time on Netflix or on YouTube or on TikTok or something. So if someone didn't check, I generally not hire them, no matter what excuse they have. Uh, and if someone checked, I kind of dig to see how in-depth they were with their research. Most people don't understand that you want to see how in-depth they are with their research. So they're just going to give you like a surface level answer. Like I checked LinkedIn, I checked the website. 
you know, you might think that's a bad answer, but you kind of want to dig deeper. Like, oh, what's something interesting that you've noticed? What's something that you've noticed that we could be doing could be doing better? What are some ideas that you have for us? And so on. So if you're an Amazon seller, you leave the link to your seller page uh, in the job post, or you send it to them before the actual call. You want to ask them, like, what did you notice that's interesting? What did you notice that we could do better? What did you notice about our ads that weren't that good? What did you notice about, like, the competition? You know, what did you notice about this or about that? And you kind of want to see if they have any insights for you. Because the more insights that they have, the more likely they are to have actually put effort into this. So this is the first question. If someone doesn't do on this, it's an automatic disqualification for me. Uh, so just, like, keep that in mind. This question is super important. After that, I want to ask them about their achievements. Successful people and winners always have a trajectory of success. Like no one's going to be like mediocre or below mediocre their whole life and like pop off all of a sudden and become a success, right? So you kind of want to see if there's a trajectory for success. So like a couple of the people that I hired um, did like cool things. Like for example, one of the people I hired started their first online store selling leather jackets when they were 12. They started selling on Amazon when they were 14. They were actually one of our first users back when we launched. So that's something that interested me. Another person started Amazon PPC at 19 as a freelancer, and they made enough money to travel to Europe and to Asia and around their country and pretty much have their own income by freelancing, and they served like dozens of clients. That's another thing. Um, another person got a full ride scholarship to the top university in their country. They started a bookstore there, and they were able to get a 50% market share using like this new affiliate marketing thing that they devised. So like these type of achievements help you identify outliers. 90% of people are just going to give you like random answers or very like unimpressive answers. Like my biggest achievement is the look on my client's face when I bring them good results. My biggest achievement are my kids or my biggest achievement is my family. That just generally means that they don't have anything that impressive to say. And that's something that you kind of want to keep an eye out for because I tend to not work with those people. After that, you want to ask them how they learn new things. Again, you just want to test for curiosity. Smart people are curious. Curious people learn more things. People who learn more things become better. And you know, if they perform better for the other company that they're working at, they're probably going to perform well for you as well. Uh, so you want to ask them how they learn new things and be super in-depth with them. So if they say like they listen to podcasts, figure out what podcast they listen to. Figure out what the episode that they listened to last was. Figure out what they learned from it. Figure out why they like to learn certain ways and why other ways they maybe don't really use that much. Like, why did they listen to this podcast specifically? What are they trying to learn? What's something that they're trying to improve about themselves? What are they trying to learn about right now? Right? So you want to filter for someone that really learns a lot. And as a bonus like point, like if they're learning about things outside of PPC as well, within the scope of business, that would be very good. So if you find like an Amazon PPC specialist who has like the intellectual curiosity to pick up a book about Jeff Bezos, and read about the person that built this whole ecosystem for them to work in, that's a really good sign. This is very rare though. So don't like, I guess, assume you're going to find someone like that. But if you do, it's a very good like probability that they're a good specialist. That's something you want to keep an eye out for. Uh, after that, you want to ask them about like a time that they took initiative in a company that they worked at. People who take initiative and people who are hard workers will always have examples of this. If they don't have any examples or have very basic examples, probably means they won't take initiative for you either. So that's something you want to keep an eye out for. And if they have like one example that's good, you can ask them, okay, so what's another example? So if they've been working at a place for three years, they should have like four, five, six, seven examples. So these questions are all you really need to find out if someone's good or not. Generally, if they don't impress you with their answers for these four questions and you feel like you need to ask more questions, it's probably not a good candidate. But if you want to keep the conversation going for any reason, I've just left a few questions here that you can ask after that. So I've left things like, you know, what motivates you to work? Do you work hard? Are you smart? What's a difficult problem you've solved? Stuff like that. Um, generally, those don't really matter as much as these four questions. But if you want to keep asking questions for whatever reason, you can maybe go through the list and see if they manage to impress you with their answers to these. Um, after that, you have a few red flags that you want to avoid. So with the red flags, um, you kind of just want to make sure that the candidate you're interviewing does, doesn't show any of these behaviors. So if they have cheesy or pre-rehearsed lines, that's a huge red flag. If they're putting up an act, which is the same thing, that's a huge red flag. If they're not being genuine, that's a huge red flag. If they have like surface level answers to everything, like if you ask them what motivates you to work, 
and they're just like, you know, I, I love my work because I feel like I'm doing something productive. Probably means that they don't love their work, right? If they're not giving you like actual in-depth answers, like if I ask someone like, why do you like Amazon PPC? And they're not giving me like an in-depth answer, I can kind of figure out that, you know, they don't really like PPC. They're kind of making something up. You know, if they're slow to get to the point, if they're rambling about stuff you didn't ask about, all of these are signs that they're not that good. Uh, you can read this whole thing in the Notion doc. I'll just skip over it that the video doesn't like go too long. Uh, but these are things you want to be aware of. Um, then what you want to look for, it's someone that really, really impresses you. So everyone knows what a smart person looks like and they know what a smart person sounds like. And if you like finish the call and you don't feel like the person you spoke to is that impressive, then you know they're probably not. Or like my mentor used to tell me, like if there's any doubt, then there's no doubt, right? Like if you have to ask yourself if someone's good, they're probably not good. Or if there's reason to believe that they might not be good, again, that's something that you probably want to look out for and maybe not hire them because of that. Finally, if they pass your interview process and they do very well, you want to give them the test. And what the test is, is a case study or like a made up scenario of a real life brand that they can actually research with like a fake scenario, like they're launching on Amazon or they want to launch off Amazon ads or they have these issues with like competitors and you want to make up like a fake scenario and kind of ask the specialist how they'd react in that situation. So these are a few examples. Um, for example, there's this brand called Outway, which sells socks on Shopify. And I'm asking the specialist in this scenario to make a launch brand for the first 90 days, right? Then over here, I asked them about a brand called Bulk Supplements and they want to expand into off Amazon advertising. And I asked them like, what's the game plan for off Amazon ads and why, right? These are a few of the answers that I've actually received. Uh, these are good answers that I've hired from, and this is a bad answer that I didn't hire from. So over here, this is one of the good answers. Um, so over here, you can see that they've actually put more effort into this than usual. I think the prompt for this one was that their brand was losing market share and we needed to use PPC to uh, increase their market share again. And this person actually went in and they looked at everything, right? So they looked at the storefront page. They looked at the fact that they didn't have like unified colors there. They looked at their competitors and they kind of analyzed their storefront page as well. Um, they kind of focused on promos and coupons as well and seven day deals. And, you know, they kind of looked at the A plus content and they went through the entire catalog and they pointed out certain ASINs that had bad content or were missing videos or were missing like A plus content for whatever reason. Um, then they, started, they actually went through the Amazon posts and they went through the PPC strategy and they outlined every single campaign that they'd set up right? And the bids that they'd set and the actual CPC they'd go after. And they just outlined every single thing, right? And they had like an explanation for why the plan would work and how it would pan out. And it was just a good video, sorry, a good, um, a good test in general, right? And it was long, it was six pages. So I felt like a lot of effort went into this and it was more effort than any other test I had received for like this uh, case study variation. Another good test was this one. So this is a launch plan for Outway, which is the one that I actually showed you in the Notion doc. Over here, uh, they actually did some research out the brand, which is good and unusual. So they looked at their DTC channel. They also looked at the number of followers they have. Um, they looked at like the niche that they're in, right? They looked at their branded search term for the launch. Uh, they looked at their competitors. They looked at everything and they kind of even went to their best sellers page on Shopify and they looked at this queues that did well and they counted them. And they just said like, these are the ones that we're gonna launch because these probably account for X percent of revenue. And they even talked about the margins and how many socks they should sell. So like, hey, we should bundle these, we shouldn't bundle these, these are the margins and so on. Um, then after that, uh, they looked at the number of reviews for the competitors. They looked at like the actual game plan on virtual bundles and how to launch these stuff. Um, and yeah, it was just like a good plan in general. So they went and they really did their research out their brand. They really did the research out the market. They really did a lot of research out what the actual game plan should be, how to bundle things, how to increase margins, how to kind of launch. So over here, they included their social media and branded traffic in the actual launch, which is good. Most people who submitted this test, they didn't think about that. They put tackles goals for each month. You know, and then they outlined their PPC strategy. And this one was actually done in a day. So I usually give three days, but this person had to do it in one day and they were able to come up with a better answer than all the other specialists that did it in three days. So this is another example um, of a good test. Then this is a bad test. This is one that I didn't hire from. 
So over here, you'll notice that this is only two pages or three X sheets, two and a half. And uh, it's generally just a bad test. There are no insights that I didn't expect. It's just like generally like, hey, I'm going to set up campaigns and I'll, uh, I'll use the keywords like these. They found like 10 keywords or 10 search terms. You know, they had spelling mistakes. You know, it, it just wasn't good. Right, and it was way too short. You can go through this later. I'm going to leave these in the actual Notion doc, so you can actually just go through them and figure out like which one was better and like what the actual differences were in your opinion. But this was a very low quality test, and I didn't end up hiring this person. So when you have like enough people going through the test, like if you've identified ten very smart people from the interview, and you can put them all through this test, one of them will have outlier results. So you're going to be able to tell very quick, like if someone has a test that's just significantly better than everyone else, and that's just going to be like a very strong like sign that they're going to do well for you. Because this test directly correlates to how well they're going to do for your actual like brand or your agency or your company, whatever it may be. And if they do really good work here, there's a 99% chance that they're going to do really good work for your company, especially if they interviewed well. And uh, that's pretty much it. We covered screening candidates, finding them, interviewing them, uh, and the test answers. The last piece of advice is don't settle. Um, if you've interviewed a bunch of people and they're all bad, don't just hire the best of the worst because they're going to disappoint you. Uh, just keep interviewing and keep putting people through the test until they uh, impress you, until you find someone that impresses you. And just like think about this a lot. Like You need someone who's really good because if they're bad, they're either going to mess up your own account if you're a seller, they're going to mess up your accounts if you're an agency or, you know, whatever else it is. They're just not going to do a good job. It's just going to take you a lot of time in the long run to fix their mistakes and to review their work. Whereas if you put up like the hours up front and you do the work up front, you're going to have to spend maybe one hour a week managing this person or none at all. So it's worth putting the work in. Uh, and if you don't want to do this whole process or if you just don't have time, we have our own specialists at AI Hello. Um, we have this hybrid plan where you can rent one of our specialists and get the software for free and they do everything for your amazon account all of these specialists have been vetted by me personally and if you want to learn more about this package you can book a call on our website www.aihello.com and you can ask about them if you mentioned that you showed up from this video i'll come personally to the call and uh, that's pretty much it thank you so much for watching this video and i'll see you guys again next week